Great Church. We are pleased this morning to welcome Pastor Larry, Reverend Larry Tomey with us to share his music and uh, to speak with us today. So thank you for being with us today. Uh, are there any announcements for the Cody Forum? Not, be sure to check your email for those as we come along. Please join me in our call for earth to worship. When the people of God were hungry, when the people of God were hungry, are hungry, let us worship the one who is the bread of life. Join us in our opening song. Christ, God has poured out the Holy Spirit upon us for the forgiveness of sin. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it was written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, Give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty.
Thank you, Kristen. Probably would like her to uh, sing every week, right? <laughs> and thank, thank you, Mike, for being the assisting minister this morning. And Dave, thank you very much. No, I never checked the bulletin, but he, he looked at the gospel text I was using, and he put the confession of sins around uh, Jesus, the bread of life. Thank you very much for, for doing that. Bread. The aroma of fresh, warm bread baking in the oven. There's nothing more savory than a fresh loaf of baked bread. I don't know about you, but I sometimes begin to salivate when I smell a fresh loaf of baked bread. Rosanna and I, and she's sitting right over there in the middle, <laughs> When we go to Florida every year, we have a favorite restaurant that we go to in Florida and as much as we can because the food is just awesome. But the bread is even more awesome. And we have to be very careful that we don't eat too much bread because then we won't have room, room for our meal. Moses and the Israelites left Egypt and they were starving in the Sinai Desert. So God provided a man. So that they could live. Bread is a staple food product of almost every group of people on the face of the earth. Bread is the basic food product of almost every culture. The Norwegians who came to America in the 1840s in order to provide the important bread for communion because their big ovens were too hot, would do this. They would roll out the dough and then take a salt shaker and take the top of the salt shaker and then press it into the dough to get the communion wafers. And because the oven was too hot, they would warm up their old flat irons and they would put the bread on the flat iron to bake it because of the oven it would burn. And that's how they made communion bread back in the 1840s, 50s, and 60s here in Wisconsin and other Norwegian areas. A good friend, pastor of mine, who's, uh, who comes from northern Germany originally, his, his ancestors, he tells this story. We Germans love our meat, hard bread, and cheese. Germans will eat meat, bread, and cheese at almost every single meal. But back in the latter Middle Ages, the Pope forbade anyone from eating meat on Fridays. And that really upset the Germans. Finally, the Pope recanted a little bit, and he allowed the Germans to eat fish meat on Fridays. And they were ex the Germans were ecstatic that they could now eat their fish meat on Fridays. But unfortunately, there is not much fishing in Germany. So they turned to the Norwegians who prepared tons and tons of salted codfish for the Germans, what we call, Nancy, Lutefis. <laughs> Kristen is now already. <laughs> and so just to add to the, this isn't part of my sermon, but Nancy used to be a part of, of Orperville Lutheran Church many years ago, and Kristen too, and every year they had a Lutefis dinner. And, and we would, and you know, none of us you know, could, could handle it. And people would come from Chicago, and they, you'd get a big plate of Ludafis. Ten minutes later, oh, another plate, please. <laughs> they would eat it like that. Back to the sermon. <laughs> so the Germans turned to the Norwegians for Ludafis. But since there's very little tillable land in Norway, what did the Germans barter with the Norwegians? The Norwegians needed grain to make bread. Bread, 
the staple of life. Every time we say the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. And in today's gospel, that my friend, the rabbi, the consummate teacher, uses bread to teach people. Jesus is always looking for a teachable moment, a way to instruct the Jewish people about the kingdom of God through parable or analogy or metaphor. Remember in the gospel of the feeding of the 5,000, a little boy's fish and loaves were shared. And Jesus uses that moment to teach people to share what they have. Now those same people are following Jesus and they ask him about the kingdom of God. And then Jesus replies with this metaphor about bread. He said, very truly I tell you it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father in heaven who gives you the true bread from heaven. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Yeah. Jesus takes that teachable moment and he compares the physical bread that is so essential for all of us to live with the spiritual bread that he provides. Jesus, the great rabbi, uses bread as a teaching tool. Just as we need bread to give us nourishment and energy for our physical lives, Jesus, the bread of life, gives us nourishment and energy for our spiritual lives. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and will never be thirsty. And so just as each molecule of grain that we eat is digested and becomes a part of our bodies, Jesus and his love should permeate our entire lives. There was a movie back in the 1980s, and I think maybe some of you saw it, and it was called Places in the Heart. At the beginning of that movie, a drunk black youngster accidentally shoots and kills the town sheriff. The boy is immediately lynched. And the rest of the movie is about the struggles of the sheriff's wife to, to survive in depression-ridden America with two kids and no skills. During the movie, several people die in a tornado. And during the movie, a black man successfully manages a large cotton crop for the widow of the sheriff. That black man is severely beaten by the Ku Klux Klan and told to leave the farm or be killed. And the movie ends, seems to end, when the black man packs his belongings and begins to leave the farm that he had so successfully developed. But then surprisingly, there's one more seed, and it shifts to the local church. The minister begins the words of institution, on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread. And then the bread and the communion wine are distributed to the people. And my heart was warmed when they passed the tray to the black man who had successfully run the widow's farm. The black man then passes it, the bread to the wife for whom he works. And then totally, unexpectedly, she passes the bread to her dead husband. And he says, she says, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And her husband takes the bread tray and passes it to the young black man who accidentally killed him. And the sheriff says, the peace of the Lord be with you. And the young bad boy takes the bread and says, the peace of the Lord be with you also. The movie ends. 
I went back and I watched the scene again. And it was only then that I realized that during communion, the half-empty church was now full. The people killed in the tornado were taking communion. Ku Klux Klan members were taking communion with black members of the church. Widows who had been sitting alone were taking communion with their dead spouses. In the dining room of our house is a picture of a table. And the table goes off into the distance and it never ends. It keeps going forever. Jesus is the bread of life. And when we share that bread and wine in communion, we're not only taking communion with ourselves and with all of Christendom and all people, but those who we have loved and have gone before us. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And so the next time you smell freshly baked bread, when you come to the communion table at this church, remember that Jesus, the bread of life, is your spiritual lunch and is as important to you as a warm loaf of fresh baked bread. Amen.
We trust in God. Guard all species of plants and animals from harsh changes in climate and empower us to protect all that you have made. Righteous God, we pray for all nations and the leaders of this world and this country. Give them a spirit of compassion and steer them toward distribution, fair distribution of resources, that none among us would have too much or too little. God of healing, your touch has the power to make us whole. We pray for those who are suffering from physical or mental illness. Embrace those of us who are sick. Surround them with your unworthy, unwavering presence and be with those who are grieving. Lord, we pray for First Presbyterian Church and all those gathered together in worship. Revive our spirits, renew our relationships, and rekindle our faith that we might experience resurrection. And Lord, we give thanks for the faithful ancestors in every age whose lives have pointed us toward you. Envelop them in your love that we may be reunited one day Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. May we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts.
Reverend Larry is joining us in sharing both his spiritual bread of life and also his wonderful musical talent. Kristen as well. So as we prepare to go out in this time of worship, let's reflect on what we have to offer the world this week. God abounds in love and mercy and welcomes us as beloved children. For Christ, God came to us that we might have abundant life. Remembering God's great love for the world, let us offer our lives to the Lord. How will you share God's abundant love with others this week? How will you listen to God, God's, God's guiding spirit this week? Living God, Living God with joy, we celebrate, celebrate the presence of your risen word. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit, so that we may go forth from this time of worship to continue our proclamation of the good news of eternal and abundant life. Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Thank you again for inviting us to be a part of your worship today. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the 